May I would you like to proceed? Yes, please. Good evening. This is the meeting of the Borough of Highlands Mayor and Council regular meeting on Wednesday, January 28, 2023. The notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Ashbury Park Press and the Two River Times and by posting at the Borough of Highlands Municipal Building and filing with the Borough Clerk all on January 1, 2023. Items listed on the agenda are subject to change. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I will now do roll call. Council Member Cervantes? Yes. Council Member Chalak? Here. Council Member Melnick? Here. Council President Chesky? Here. Mayor Brian? Here. We have a quorum. Next, we have approval of minutes. January 1st, 2023 meeting minutes. Uh, Council Member Cervantes is absent. Oh, so you have to. Well, yeah. So I'll second. Um, who first? I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Tillac? Uh, yes. Council Member Melnick? Yes. Yeah. Council President Jeske? Yes. Yeah. Mayor Brian? Yes. Motion carries to approve January 1st, 2023 meeting minutes. Next, we have public hearing on proposed ordinance 02301, designating restricted parking in front of residents occupied by persons with disabilities. I will open uh, the hearing if anyone has any questions regarding this handicapped um, restricted parking. Seeing so no one, I will close public portion and I'll offer it. I'll second. Council Member Cervantes? Yes. Council Member Chalak? Yes. Council Member Melnick? Yes. Council President Chesky? Yes. Mayor Brian? Yes. Motion carries ordinance 02301 pass on second and final reading. Next, we have 02302 designating restricted parking in front of residents occupied by persons with disabilities. Um, this one, just, just to clarify, the first one was for 185 London, and the second one is for uh, South Street. And uh, I will open up for public portion for this. Um, anyone have a comment regarding the same gaps? Uh, restricted parking. And see no one. I will close public portion and offer this one as well. I'll second. Council Member Salantes? Yes. Council Member Chad? Yes. Council Member Melnick? Yes. Council President Chesky? Yes. Mayor Brian? Yes. Motion carries to ordinance 02302 pass on second and final reading. Next, we have consent agenda. Mayor, would you like me to read the resolutions by title? Yes, please. R23044, amending resolution 23039, entitled Approving 2023 Events on Various Borough Properties. R23045, Appointing Fire Police. O23, I'm sorry, R23046, Approving Request for a Waiver of Alcohol Ban for Community Center Rental. R23046, 47, approving request for a waiver of alcohol ban for community center rental. R23048, authorizing refund of tax overpayments. R23049, approval of some, to submit a grant application and execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for the improvement of Wilderville Park. R23050, authorizing contract for animal control services. R23051, authorizing payment of bills. And R23052, authorizing the execution of a hold harmless and release agreement between the Borough of Highlands and the Bayview Condominium Association, Inc. Um, I will offer it, but I will only offer, I will offer it with the amendment to 23046 that the date be changed to 2023. It's listed currently as 2022. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? So, Council Member Cervantes? Yes. Council Member Chai? Yes. Council Member Melnick? Yes. Council President Chesky? Yes. Mayor Brian? Yes. 
Motion carries to adopt resolutions R22044 through R20 with the amendment of R23046 from 2022 to 2023 through resolutions R23052. Next, we have reports. Um, I have an end of the year report, and that is um, that we continue, the council has continued to address past issues as well as plans for Highlands future, both residents and businesses. We are again very successful in locating, pursuing, and weighing grants, as well as other funding sources to help fund infrastructure projects and updates to our open spaces. The state of the borough at the end of 2022. Uh, residents, staff, businesses, charitable organizations, and clergy all work together to help neighbors uh, who are in need of our help. Uh, food, clothing, and toy drives showed how amazing and resilient our community remains. The municipal tax rate lowered for the fourth straight year. The combined evaluations of all properties in the borough raised to $889 million in change. And this was an increase in valuation of an incredible $124 million. Uh, this is the largest year over year increase that the borough has ever seen in, their, in our assessed value. Uh, we have three new businesses open in town and that is the UN Owens Recording Studio, Cafe La Vida, and Pharmacy. Uh, grants and other funding sources that were awarded in 2022 were $808,000. Uh, some of the goals that we were able to get accomplished in 2022 uh, was the completion of GIS mapping of stormwater and sanitary and sewer systems, as well as stormwater outfalls and bulkhead mapping. We completed the North Street pump electric mitigation improvement. Uh, the county completed the Carrie McGowan, uh, Carrie McAtee McGowan off leash dog run over at Pompanora Point. We completed repairs and paint to the Marine Place bulkhead and cap, as well as a new platform on the Snug Harbor side. We completed upgrades to Huddy and Veterans Park playground areas, completed the reconstruction of South Bay Ave, completed reconstruction of King and Matthew Street. Completed the installation of Gabion on the hill behind Twin Lights Terrace. Completed the area redevelopment process for Bay Avenue. We updated the slope ordinance and broke ground finally on the uh, municipal building. And uh, continued to actively address runoff issues at Monmouth Hills and submit three grants to help uh, pay for the work that we're looking to do up there. Well, up there and down here. Um, some targeted goals that we have for 2023 uh, is to uh, continue to implement the stormwater projects from the 2021 Flood Mitigation Resilient Plan, uh, work with the landscape architect to create a holistic approach to using resilient fauna on all of our borough properties, uh, finally regionalize the school districts of Highland, Seabright, and Atlantic Highlands, to move forward with mitigation to fix those runoff issues at Monmouth Hills that have been going on for well over 100 years. To complete the new uh, skate park and the ports at Snug Harbor that should be done in just a matter of weeks. Well, maybe it's the, not the skate park, but the Snug Harbor project. Um, complete upgrades at Gertrude Edley Park. Those are going on ahead very smoothly. Uh, complete the water which pump upgrades and install the backup generator there. Uh, we're looking to start the uh, sanitary sewer project for the, this entire water watch area. Uh, that should be happening by the end of the month. Um, complete the installation of the EV charging station at 171 Bay Avenue, and that should be completed by May. Complete the new municipal building that's looking to be happening by the summer. Um, complete the reconstruction of Bayside Drive and Marie Street from Shore Drive to the borough border and the work there includes sanitary soon main replacements, storm drainage improvements, um, as well as paving, uh, paving. And that's uh, being helped out by a DOT grant of 246000 and change. Uh, we also want to complete the upgrades to Frank Hall Park, including the bocce ball court 
the Lions Club has already raised uh, over $4,000 to uh, help that out. And we are also looking to complete the construction on our first new park in about 40 years, which is Overlook Park, and that's on Route 36. So that's the wrap up of 2022. Does anyone at the table have anything that they want to add? Just a couple of things. Sure. Um, so the Environmental Commission, uh, we met. they have uh, concerns about light pollution in town in some areas, and they'll be sending the town uh, a letter regarding that with details of, with details of exactly where they're talking. And uh, also they mentioned um, the lights leading to the Gateway uh, National Park on Sandy Hook. Um, I'm not quite sure. I don't, what was wrong with that, but uh, that will be included in this letter asking the town if uh, we would agree to uh, petition uh, the, the uh, National Park Service about it, the, those, those particular lights. Um, also, uh, on March 7th, Army Corps of Engineers is having um, an online meeting uh, regarding flood mitigation from Sandy Hook to the Rockaways. Also, March 7th? March 7th, yeah. I, I got my third Okay. Is it? Yeah. So we'll put something out on the website so that people can... Oh, right, if they want to join me. Exactly. Um, so, uh, and moving on to um, the windmills, the possibility of windmills in the New York bite. Uh, if anybody's heard, there's been about seven whales that have washed up on the Jersey Shore in the last couple of months. Uh, one, uh, a baby whale, washed up in Kingsburg. And some of the anti-windmill people are claiming that uh, the sound, uh, the sounds that are being made by the exploration uh, of uh, the windmill companies uh, underwater are affecting the whales. They, you know, they, they respond to sound and sonar, and they think that that could be a possibility uh, you know, not, uh, it could be something else. Uh, also, too, um, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal recently that the, the costs to build that on the, off the Jersey coast, all the way up to Massachusetts, actually, there's like three or four firms involved. The costs are getting so high that um, it may not make sense to do it at all. So that's, uh, that's the latest uh, with that. And then uh, briefly, uh, on the building, uh, I'm on the uh, building liaison now. I uh, spoke to Joe Kaczynski. I will be meeting him very soon. Uh, and that uh, Governor Murphy has signed a new state law with inspections that they have to be completed within three days of request. So that will be uh, good. And then, of course, there's Shadow Lawn. Uh, you said you wanted to talk about it. Sure. Or you um, uh, know what I mean about violations? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> so, uh, Brian, could I ask you, you've had mentioned um, the, the higher, uh, the $2,000 fine. Well, I, I, right now, there's kind of court fines that that you jump in heavy game here. Okay. Uh, that's separate and apart. Those are on the UCC. Um, I don't believe um, have been addressed for an issue at this point. However, I do understand code enforcement has issued a number of substances we are now getting in this point of court. So he's yeah. getting that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, the schools, I would just like to, to uh, mention one thing. I have a hell of a lot of boys, so, so I'm going to get into this. Um, you can go on the town's website and you can see this and the whole agenda is there. But on the 31st of January, which is the Tuesday at 6.30, there will be a tri-district board meeting. In other words, boards from the three schools will be getting together and the topic is regionalization. And it's interesting because I'm looking through the, the agenda and under their action items, the first is a resolution to withdraw from pending joint petition 
to the Commissioner of Education requesting approval for regionalization. That was a, a conjointure of the three towns and the school districts applying together and uh, uh, past the point sure. at any point, but they withdrawing from the concept and what they want to do now apparently, a resolution to submit a new petition to the Commissioner of Education requesting approval of the regionalization of the Henry Hudson Regional District, Atlantic Highlands Elementary School District, and the Highlands Elementary School District. So I'm gathering they, their choice now is to submit as the three schools and not involve the town and not involve Seabright. And uh, not involve Seabright. Yeah, you're right. Seabright is not in that. And that's where all the cost savings come from. Yeah, well, we don't have any cost savings without Seabright. That's true. Yeah. So it, it's a time. Uh, I know there's so many people here, but I know there's people who watch this and listen. Um, it's a time to be heard. Mm -hmm. It's a time to get the information there and to make your voice heard about what matters to you, whether you're a taxpayer or a parent. So I would strongly advise everyone who can to go to that meeting. Thank you. And just to add a little bit to that, um, uh, our, uh, our portion of what we pay for taxes in Henry Hudson, and if you add that to what our taxes pay for the elementary school, is roughly the same as what to educate 300 children is the same as what it costs for what we raise in taxes to run a town of nearly 5,000 people. So if you think that cost savings can't be achieved by regionalization, you should really think again. Um, and, and if you look at these numbers, they're, they're stark, they're out there, they're on everybody's websites, and they're there for the table. So um, I know a lot of people like to come to us and yell at us about how high taxes are when you're, you know, a lot of people ignore the fact that our schools are <coughs> what's taking a, a large chunk of your taxes as well. So at least we have two, four, six, seven people here, um, but at all of the school board meetings that I attend, there's absolutely zero people in the audience. Mm -hmm. And if you have no voice to bring to the table to speak to the eight plus million dollars that our two schools are asking us to pay, um, I don't even know what to tell you. It, you need to ask questions, you need to talk to your school board people that we've elected uh, to manage these schools and, uh, and get a handle on this regionalization process because it really is so past due. We've been talking about it since Henry Hudson opened in 1962. It's time to stop talking about it and it's time to just do it. And it's going to be best for the kids it's going to be best for all three of our communities, and it's just time to do it. That's all I've got to say. I, I would also add that we're not, Seabright isn't bringing buttloads of kids. There's no As a matter of fact, kids. Kids. it's 20. In this year alone, Henry Hudson, uh, uh, Island Elementary, has lost 10 kids in enrollment. They moved on or whatever, so we can deal with more kids. Uh, Seabright doesn't have a whole lot of kids to bring. But they have money to come with them that would be substantial. And a savings to them, because they've been in a, in a tough deal with the, the towns that they do send their kids to, that they can't get out of. But they can't get out of it. So it, it's, it's a well, they can get out of it only through legislation, through this legislation that was recently passed, and through a vote being put on the ballot in November. And all of this grandstanding and stalling needs to stop. We need to get it to you, the voter, and your voices need to be heard. It's as simple as that. It, the stopping you from voicing your opinion at the ballot box needs to stop. It needs to go to the voters. And that's all I've got to say about the organization. I get it. Okay. Mr. Nolan? Could, couldn't agree with the mayor or council president anymore. Um, also, thanks all of you for showing up. But we'd also like to emphasize that well, you all have shown up and you can see all this in person. You also have the benefit of seeing this after the fact. Uh, you do not have the benefit of seeing any of those meetings after the fact of the school board. Yeah. Uh, and the recording. So if you don't show up in person like you're doing tonight, 
um, for the school board uh, meeting, you have no opportunity to see anything uh, other than read the minutes after the fact. Enjoy reading those minutes. Yeah, the minutes um, they're, they're um, so, with that said, uh, two quick updates from committees that I've got. Um, one, if you might have noticed over the past week, uh, the Pearl website has a little bit of wonkiness to it. We experienced uh, a very necessary PHP upgrade as a component of the website platform. Uh, for security reasons, we've upgraded from 7.4 to 8.0. Um, that's necessary to keep us uh, free from some of the vulnerabilities that are out there with the older versions. Uh, as a result, some of the sections of the website aren't behaving uh, the way they should. We've rectified a lot of them. The ordinances, the resolutions, those have been repaired. But some things like the borough projects are still uh, not quite there yet. So we're working with our uh, team to repair those. Uh, but if you do notice anything, feel free to drop us a line uh, on email. If you notice anything you haven't yet, um, but just know that we are fixing those. And they are directly related to an intentional upgrade, nothing uh, nefarious there. Uh, and then the second uh, item, quickly, open space meets next Wednesday. Uh, I know that there's been a little bit of chatter out there as to some of the activities around open space. You heard the mayor and her report reading out some of the activities we have had over the past year with some of the work around open space and some of the activities that we're looking forward to in 23 around open space with Overlook Park. Um, if you have any questions about what's going on in open space, 7.30 p.m. via Zoom, happy to have everybody there. Ask your questions. Uh, if you don't have the opportunity to join us at Open Space Meeting at 7.30, again, feel free to drop us a line. Happy to answer any questions with facts uh, that you like. Um, that's that it, so. Okay. Uh, I think we just had one little item of unfinished business from the last regular meeting, and that is for the sale of the uh, borough-owned lot that we um, we got in a tax sale, well, not a tax sale, tax lien back in 91, I want to say. Um, and that is block 47, lot 10. That is the empty lot that's in between um, Parks on Bay and Giannis. Uh, so we did a resolution at the last meeting in uh, 2022 um, saying that we could either do a sealed bid or an online auction. It's been, um, you know, made to our attention that there are some kind of steep fees involved with the online option. So I would just like for all of us to be on record that uh, we're okay with doing a sealed bid. Those are sealed bids would then be submitted to the firm. We, of course, would advertise all of this in the newspapers and give however many days as deemed uh, within the resolution. And that way, neither we need to incur any charges for being on the online option, and the successful bidder would also not be charged any additional fee other than the cost of the property of the bidding. Yeah, there, there's no additional fee. I think that that's what the, the concern was. There was yes. additional overhead that was associated to being uh, with the skill bid process, and as much fun as it would be to take the online or a real life time, time option. That's, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're not passing it, there's no cost on it. Exactly. So we're all in agreement that sealed bid is probably the way to go, no additional fees, <clears throat> and people can just bid on the property itself. Yeah, so it's like bidding on eBay, huh? Well, no, it would, you would submit a, a written sealed bid, and it would get oh. sent to the borough, and then the borough gets all the bids, just like how we do with our RFPs, and then on a, a, whatever said day it is, um, the clerk would then open up all of the sealed bids, <laughs> or the attorney would uh, open up all of the bids, and then um, you know the process unfolds after that. If there, as you alluded to, there are specific publication requirements, yes. so it would be published, and then there would be a date for submission of the sealed bids. So no extra fees. No extra fees. No extra fees. No extra fees. All about saving money. Yeah. Okay, that was my only thing for extra. What brings us to public portion? Individuals wishing to address the council may be recognized by the presiding officer and shall give their name, address, and the group of any they represent. Although the council encourages public participation, it reserves the right for its presiding officer to terminate remarks to and or by any individual not in keeping with the conduct of a proper and efficient meeting. If any individual wishes to 
refuses to conduct themselves in a proper manner, they will be removed from the meeting. The council will not, during the public portion of this meeting, discuss matters involving employment, appointments, termination of employment, negotiations, terms and conditions of employment, evaluation of the performance of promotion or discipline of any specific or prospective or current employee. There's a three minute time limit for your comments. Uh, Joseph Doran, 102 Valley Avenue. Um, I'm here about the uh, 14 North Peak Street project, which is ongoing behind my house. Um, I have uh, three questions this evening. I hope we can find the time to answer them. Uh, my first question is why the borough is not enforcing the steep slope warnings. Um, this project uh, uh, was started well over a year ago. Uh, I'm going to probably ask only three questions and then we'll go from there if that's okay. Uh, number two, does approval of the retaining wall have to go before the land use board after the engineer's approval. Question number two. And then question number three is, um, how is a sewer line permit granted before there are comprehensive site plans submitted and approved by the land use board? It's my belief that the sewer line permit should never have been granted um, to the building. The right of way for this sewer line is, is within the area of the steep slope and adjacent to my property. This permit should have been the last thing granted to the builder, not the first permit that was granted to him. Those are my three questions. Uh, I don't, I don't know. The answers are here, but I'm asking them, nonetheless. And uh, I can't, I can't answer your questions in the vacuum because I don't know what the status is. But I, I don't know if the engineer is aware of that project. Uh, the only involvement that I've had is, is we reviewed a uh, grading plan that was submitted by the builder. Uh, we denied the grading plan because it did not conform to the ordinance and no other plan was ever submitted. Um, it's my understanding we've got a, I believe we got a demolition permit uh, from the borough and um, I don't know what the details of, it, you know, what was approved and not approved uh, by the building department. Um, that would be under their purview. Um, and I believe a land use board application needs to be submitted. Um, but uh, we'd be happy to review the material in conjunction with the municipal engineer, but we can't answer your questions tonight because Ryan and I or the engineer have that material in front of us. Right. Okay. Um, that was about the retaining wall. Um, specific to my question was approval of the retaining wall. If there is an approval of the retaining wall by the engineer's department, does that then have to go to the land use board? I, I can't board. answer a hypothetical, sir. I have to see the project file. Well, I'm asking the engineer. He, he's not able to answer. I can answer that question. I have to okay. see the retaining wall okay. plan. So okay. I will go to the go to the first question I asked. Why is the borough not enforcing the steep slope ordinance, which the engineer's department has a report going back to December of uh, 21? that states that he's in violation of the steep slope limits. I have that report in my hands, if need be, to go to that. Um, if there's not an answer here tonight, that's okay. But there should be, at some point, an answer as to why the steep slope is, is not being enforced. I, I was told that it was under assignment, and I was also told that it's no longer under assignment by, by the judge and that uh, they should be free from that and clear to be enforced. Um, 
And then um, um, about the sewer line permit being given to the builder before he even took the trees down. Uh, that's the sequence of events, and it's just unfathomable to me that this project ever got off the ground. And then just one closing statement. Um, from, this, from the start, the builder, Mr. Farku, has violated the protocols for this project. He continues to ignore the, the borough's rules and regulations and ordinance. His intent is on circumventing the borough's authority, even today, okay, and even after there was a stop work order, which is still in effect. In my opinion, he violated that. And on that note, I will, I will yield the floor. So you said it was 14 North Street. Good evening. It's okay. Uh, Staff of Happening 24 Waterwich. Um, I'm, I'm here for about the storm on December 23rd. I realized it was a storm and we had major flooding, but the breach of Captain's Cove is really unneighborly at this point. It's enough is enough. Between their floating docks, all the wood that was all over our neighborhood, which the town does not pick up after the fact, we can leave it out there for days upon days and weeks, and the town doesn't pick it up, and I get it that it's construction material, but it's not my construction material. It's someone else's, that's in sold, that floats along and lands on our property. So I just want to know if once and for all, we're going to do something about them. Enough. They're not neighborly. Everybody in our, in our little neighborhood helps one another out, and they're just hindering us. And that's enough. And that's all I want to say, is if we're going to finally you know, put their butts to the fire there. I'm like, enough, clean up your mess. Don't leave it to us neighbors to clean up your mess. I can tell you the borough is well aware of it and is addressing it, and I've also contacted DDP. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Michael Cannon, Penn Central Inn. Um, First, I wanted to check. I noticed that the um, there was an attorney-client uh, client, um, session on the phase one sewer. Is that you mentioned that it was on track to start in the next month? Is that still? Is there anything affecting the construction schedule um, with regard to the phase one sanitary sewer project? And From the last call that we've had, the contractor said he was ready to start. I believe on the 23rd. Okay, so there's not some just seeing it on the, uh, you know, the, There's always the, contingencies and we always have to be ready for a, a next move, so that's why it's there. Okay. Um, with regard to what was mentioned on the Army Corps for the project, um, uh, it's the New York, New Jersey Harbor and Tributaries project, mm -hmm. which has several of the alternatives that were proposed would have an effect in this area. Um, March 7th is the close of public comment on the environmental impact statement. The next virtual public meeting, I believe is scheduled for February 6th. And the next in-person meeting in New Jersey, I don't know that it's on their website yet, but I believe that is scheduled for February 8th at um, the Liberty Science Center up at Jersey City. Um, there have been, there was a meeting at New Jersey Institute of Technology last night with Brooklyn. Been a lot of meetings on it. But um, you can Google the website, New Jersey, New York, New Jersey, Harbor and Tributary Study. There's video of presentations. There's pamphlets in every language you can imagine. And um, there's a lot of information available. Um, 
With regard to the Army Corps, also wondering the project, Flood Resilience Project for Highlands um, that the Army Corps has. Has there been anything done to sort of unstick the town's position? Because there's a lot of, in order to get to a yes or a no, there should be a lot of coordination, neighbor by neighbor, Maybe, you know, what will work, what won't work, how could we ever get to a yes? There's a lot of, in, a lot of concerns I can imagine with regard to access. I know right out here the plan won't work. That would have to be changed. So there's a lot of work that could be done to get to a yes, but the plan the way it is now is enough. And so someone has to take the bull by the horns, go neighborhood by neighborhood, and see what it would take to get to yes. And I just don't see Can anything answer, happening. Could I answer you? We sure. have been speaking with DEP. DEP is going to be coming to town, as well as Army Corps. Um, and I can tell you right now that back in 2019, no one that's sitting at this table was sitting at this table except for me. And we made a promise that the people at this table are not making the decision on the Army Corps plan. You, the voters, are making the decision on the Army Corps plan. We, we talked to DEP, we said, you know, what, what could be in and what could be out, and they've been very firm that they don't want to change anything. DEP and Army Corps don't want to change anything. We continue to talk, we're going to continue to have meetings, and we want to have public meetings, which we will do, and everyone will be able to have their say and speak directly to both the Corps, to DEP, to whoever else comes to the table uh, that's going to come to this meeting. And they're very anxious and they want to meet with everybody and they want to hear everybody's input, which I think is good that they want to hear the input because they need to hear the input. I mean, I think they know where the community stands and how much work it will take. And I, you know, to say they're not willing to change, I think there's a point where they can't change without having to go back to Congress. And that may be what they're unwilling to do, but if that's what it takes, it has to be our plan, not their plan. I it, it, has to be a, it has to be a mutual plan. And we, we can't get what we want until we know what we want. And we have to do that hard work to get there. Sure. And so I don't, that's what I'm thinking as a community. We really have to start digging in location by location. And I don't know how we get there, you know, without meeting with the people, bringing the plans out. What would work on your property? What would work over here? And it's, it's a lot of work. I've been through this in other places. Yeah. I mean, we've asked for scale models. They said we absolutely won't give you any that's sort of models. Uh, we've asked happened. for an artist's rendering. Instead of purple dashes mean one thing and pink dots mean something else. To the regular person, they don't understand what purple dashes and pink dots are. You need to show people what it's going to look like. And if they are so holding back on showing people what it looks like, it's a cause for concern. I'm, you can have an art student from a high school draw a rendering, but uh, they won't give it to you. go to the Harbor and Trip study, you will see renderings for okay. they places have not all around us. the region of what the plan would look like. They will not give us a rendering, and they keep on saying, oh, go to Port Mama. So I go to Port Mama, what do they show me? a 20-foot concrete wall that looks like it belongs to the prison complex. Mm -hmm. um, the wall that would be comparable to here mm -hmm. is that low wall with that sort of groove look, right. which is the wall with the pump station that's going from, a, you know, that's going to be much, much larger. Right. And that's, mm -hmm. I don't believe there's anything of that scale in the plan. But I really think Somewhere we have to make a commitment and start engaging the community with this instead of putting it off as the Army Corps plan until we make it our own. We sure. never got to get what's needed. So.
I have your contact information. I'm going to reach out to you. I want okay. you and I to sit down, and I think we should write a questionnaire together. And I think we should I put like it out there and mm -hmm. follow it up with some focus groups. And I'd really like you to help me get that done. Sure. Um, we'll get in touch. Okay. I will do. I'll reach out to you. Hello. Uh, Don. Don Tarpey, 365 Short Drive. Uh, could you give me some more information about the light pollution you were referring to? Like well, private residence or street lamps? No, or? it's a business residence, but I prefer not to say specifically where it is right now until we get this uh, official letter from the Environmental Commission. But uh, what I was told is that the position of the slide is bothering some residents that are around this particular business. Okay. So, so you'll be getting more information on that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I requested the uh, Environmental Commission to send a panel letter okay. about what Good. the problem is. Good. Uh, I have another question about C Street parking lots and their properties. Do they pay rent to the town for those properties, or do they own them outright? They own them outright. They own them. Yes. Both properties. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. No Seeing no other public comment, I will close public portion. Okay. Next item is the. Next item is executive session. Executive session will be held following the regular council meeting. Prior to each executive session, the borough council will convene an open session in which, at which time a resolution will be adopted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 13. No formal action will be taken during executive session. Be it resolved that the following portion of this meeting shall not be open to the public. Be it further resolved that Private consideration is deemed required and is permitted because of the following note exceptions set forth in the Act. Contract negotiations using FW contract, attorney client privilege, phase one sanitary sewer improvement projects, pending or anticipated litigation, attorney client privilege areas in need of redevelopment. It further resolved that it is anticipated that the matters will be considered in private may be disclosed to the public at a later date when the need for privacy no longer exists. I will offer it. Okay. Councilmember Cervantes? Yes. Councilmember Chillac? Yes. Councilman Melnick? Yes. Council President Shelsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to enter executive session at 7.43. I'm asking the public to please exit the building. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. Um, David? Aye. 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 Executive. Um, meeting adjourned at 8.26. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>